So we have the Sword of Convalaria post demo Q&A, and we're going to jump right in to see if any of the questions or answers that you guys were looking for were addressed. So let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Hello, Sword of Convalaria. First of all, we would like to thank all of you for the amazing reception to our Steam demo. It surpassed all our expectations and it means the world to us. Now, we know that you guys have a lot to say, so today we're doing a special community Q&A in order to take on some of your toughest questions and let you guys know about the future path of Sword of Convalaria. Now, without further ado, let's get started. First right, question. Go. These devs will yap about anything but the release date. <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm really excited for this game and I'm hoping the longer they take developing, the better it will be. So here's hoping for a solid launch whenever that happens. Great. I'm not going to lie. I've never seen a development team actually take on like a troll comment like that. So that's actually really like, that's just kind of nice to see. That's really nice to see. Good question. So first of all, thank you for the support and for following Sword of Convalaria. Now, we know that people are very curious about the release date and maybe even getting a little bit impatient. We are very aware of that and it's a conscious risk that we took when delaying the launch. Yeah. We believe that it was for the best of the game and its long-term development. We will post the release date as soon as possible, so please just bear with us. Next up, we have some questions about localization. Okay. Glaring inconsistency with translations, be it grammatical or linguistic, leave a sour taste when trying to absorb any of the story available. We totally agree. Being fans of the genre and being inspired by classics such as Final Fantasy Tactics, Tactics Ogre and much more, we place huge emphasis on lore and storytelling. So we are aware that there is room for improvement with our LQA. Yeah. And that is one of the reasons for postponing the launch. I mean, they also did like we uh, not too long ago actually did an entire testing phase um, or not really a testing phase, but it was basically a uh, LQ uh, a <laughs> like that was basically uh, or a language testing, basically. So we were able to actually go in. It was a few of us and we were able to actually help with some of the translation of the game. So I don't know if they went and they implemented some of that stuff because the next fest basically kind of happened like right after that. So I'm pretty sure they probably took some of that feedback and some of the suggestions that we gave from that um, to help, you know, better the game for at least what we were able to see so i do know that that is like for for 100 percent a concern of theirs and they really did actually work on this and are actively working on this i can at least attest to that we are now putting insane efforts on bringing our english lqa up to par so we hope by the time we get to the full launch it will be up to industry standards next up the voice localization might have english options on the full release to be perfectly honest, English voice acting is not on our plans right now. So as previously mentioned, our top That's priority fair. right now is to get the English translation up to par. And meanwhile, we'll be focusing on the Japanese stuff. And the reason for that is because we have greatly studied our players and we do believe that the majority actually prefer to play with a Japanese voice act. Yeah, I think that that actually is a fair take, like because I'm not going to lie. It's not that people have a thing against English voice actors, but I think overall, like if they're going to spend money and invest in those voice actors, um, yes, it is going to be a much smaller, you know, minority taking advantage of the English VAs compared to like JP. Most people would throw them on JP anyway. Um, and the thing is, is that I think that that's something that we can maybe see happen later on, um, you know, especially once this game develops a budget. I don't know how big their budget is for this game. But it definitely does take some money to be able to have like, you know, English and JP and KR and CN voice actors and like those companies that are able to make those things happen. They definitely have slightly bigger budgets. Um, and also, too, like when you're looking at just the overall, uh, you know, just aesthetic of the game, it would be nice, of course, to have English vo uh, voice acting. But I really feel like JP dubbing with up to par English translation should be fine for us to be able to digest it so I'm, I'm really hoping to see more with that but I, I think that that's actually a pretty fair take the company is making I think so we think it makes more sense to keep investing in Japanese voice acting 
while at the same time improving the quality of our English translation. Now, of course, if someday we do get a lot of feedback asking for an English voiceover, then we might consider it, but it's not in our short-term plans. Next up, when will we ever get customization for character looks? As we speak, some sort of skin or customization system is actually in the works. Oh, that's now, fire. We cannot guarantee when it's going to be fully completed or come to the global launch, but it's in the works. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really cool because I think that that's actually one of the one of the things that made, um, you know, just that potential aspect with a lot of our favorite like tactics games, um, just being able to have different like outfits and skins and seasonal things. These are always really, really great things to have in a game. And I even feel like it's a huge contribution to keeping players like kind of going, especially if they're free to play. They're going to be able to get something out of it, which is nice, right? So is there a gotcha slash random recruits in the story mode? So the way that the story mode works is that it is totally independent from multiplayer, meaning that it works in a classic TRPG uh, mechanic. So basically you progress through the game, you get in-game currency, and then there is a tavern in your town hub where you can recruit new units. Next up, speed up toggle would be nice, as well as an option for maybe up to four times, as the speed still can mode. be a bit slow sometimes. Actually, we do already have speed up toggles available. You can check them out here. We're going to leave the UI up on the screen. And if players still find it a bit too slow, we can consider making it even faster. Next up, we have some criticism regarding UI. UI seems very touch screen inspired. You bring up a very valid point. So Sword of Convalaria was originally developed for mobile, but when we were planning the Western release, we decided to also port it to other platforms as of now PC and yep. Switch. Of course, the influence that mobile development had on the UI is quite feasible, but we've received a lot of feedback from players, so we have been working on a new UI system. So eventually, every single platform will have its own UI. Oh, that's fire. So every single platform is going to get its own UI, which I think is actually pretty massive. Not going to lie. Every every single platform having its own UI, usually you kind of see, like, and you can kind of tell, like, you'll get a PC version of a game, you're like, oh, that's just a mobile port. Like, you can, you can kind of tell. Um, so I think that that's actually a pretty big deal. And so you kind of see where a lot of monetary investment is going, which is really, really good. Um, and I feel like this is going to be some of the things that we can consider if you end up being one of those spenders where your you know your hard earned dollar is going to be going because i think a lot of this also too is a lot of things that they're trying to fit within their budget realistically and it seems like they're actually trying to give players a lot of different things this is why i feel like them pushing the game back as much as it sucked and i would have loved to have been jumping right into sort of convalaria content that, that was okay um you know it, it it's it just is what it is and i feel like the more time that they have to cook up the game when we do actually get it um we're gonna enjoy it a, a thousand percent next up how fast slash how much time do you need to grind the online mode to get keys for campaign. So just by doing the monthly sign-in event, you can get up to eight keys per month. And then also by signing in weekly, you can get an extra two keys per week, meaning that you can get up to 16 keys per month without doing anything in the multiplayer, just coming and logging in. Now, the reason we designed it like that is very simple. Uh, you can basically complete the single story campaign for free without spending a single dime but we also decided to implement an incentive for players to keep coming back and stay active long term which we think is beneficial for the community and of course for our long term development yeah it is because it's a gacha game they have to find something to like it's every gacha game has it they have to have something that keeps players coming back whether it be you know functionality wise or system wise for them to be you know just more active or to continue to want to be active next up can we have the main character become a playable unit to be perfectly honest, when we were first designing Sword of Convalaria, we did not think of the MC as a playable unit. Now, after the Steam demo, we did receive a lot of feedback regarding this, so we might consider it, but no promises right now. Next up, do I you plan to fair. be multiplayer in the future? So right now we are actually developing a friendly PvP system. Then as that launches, we are gonna judge players' reactions and see how invested players are into PvP and if they want more competitive PvP modes or if maybe just a friendly mode is enough. 
we will then base future development from that. I think that I think that that's actually very smart. So I think it it, it sometimes hurts games when they just throw things into the game without doing proper like data collecting and actually seeing if that's even something players are even going to enjoy so having it be and this kind of goes into this mentality i talk about all the time it's easier to work your way up than it is to work your way down so if they're able to see that one players like this a lot and it's a friendly system it's easier for them to build on it versus trying to tear it down and try to take out oh okay this is too strong or this is too pay to win so we got to try to balance you know it's much easier to do that so i would say if you are super super into pvp definitely partake in it send as much feedback as you can on it when the opportunity comes um because i think that that actually will pro, uh, you know potentially push more of that into the game especially if people are looking for that um and i actually would even like to see like a raid you know like like you no know, raid mode or something like that with the multiplayer if possible at some point um everybody gets to pick a character or something like that and we just go in and kind of go sick everybody can have a role like i think that that would also be pretty cool in this game uh with the art style and stuff i, I really don't think i've ever really seen that done with this style of game um with the way it looks at least so yeah that would be something i would at least like to see too finally any demo slash beta test for sort of convalaria android or ios before release very good question so first of all in light of our delay and because we have been developing so many new systems some of them which we actually already mentioned in this community q a and some of them which are still in the wraps we might do a final closed beta before the official launch. That is still not 100% confirmed right okay. now, but if we do open a final beta before launch, you can expect that it will have many of the fully new systems that we have been discussing and hinting at. And that's all for today. Thank you for joining our first community Q&A, and remember to leave us a comment with any other questions you might want us to cover in our next video. Now, we know the greatest question on everyone's minds, the launch date. I still can't answer that today, but <laughs> I will as soon as possible. And remember to ask anything else you want to know about Sur of Convalaria or give us feedback about our future direction and development. That's all for today, and we'll catch you all on the next one. So I'm not going to lie. I love their Q&As. I feel like they really are taking the time necessary to make sure that we're getting a great, a great game. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that like this game is going to be accessible on Switch. You're going to be able to play it on Google Play, Apple, Steam, Windows. Like this is going to be a great, great, great time when the game does launch. And I'm just very, very happy that they're taking the game serious. I feel like this is also a sign that they're going to be taking uh, people's money serious, right? Like if you think about it, would you want, uh, you know, to continue to you know back development teams that aren't really trying to bring the best foot forward when it comes down to the game uh presentation and just overall how the game makes you feel and the experience of it like we we have to make much better decisions and i feel like this is one of the things that's kind of leading up to um where we should and i feel like they honestly kind of deserve that aspect of, uh, you know, extra love when it comes down to that. Because I feel like too often we will go and we'll invest in games and then we kind of realize like, oh man, this team doesn't really care about us or they're just trying to make money. And obviously every company is trying to make money, right? But I think that there are some that are way more obvious than others. And I just really like how they really are trying to take the necessary time to make sure that this isn't an EOS when it releases. Like people will say that all the time. And then, you know, next year, we're sitting here like, wait, do you remember that game? I forgot what the name of it was, <laughs> right? Like that happens a lot. So I am actually like really, really pleased with the direction that they're going. I think that they're honestly doing a really good job. And I feel like for what it's worth, this is giving us time to just kind of cook. They do have obviously like the TW version of the game going on. Um, and I just want to fully focus on, uh, I probably do some stuff from the TW at some point um, closer to the release, but um, I really want to make sure I'm just like focusing on what we got going on with Sword of Convalaria on the EN or global version of the game. Uh, so I'm still really excited. I know you guys have been wondering where your boy's been at. I do run two of other channels um so yeah i've been working on those while i've been just kind of waiting to see what happens with sort of convalaria you know obviously you haven't seen anything else come up on the channel so i still fully intend to play this game and just have fun with it man so yeah i hope you guys have an amazing day man uh everybody stay blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one